Today, I have a discussion with Karen Della Carriere on Tom Cruise and how the Scientology cult has pretty much done anything he asks. But in return, his publicity, the PR, really helps this cult look good and gain more followers. So much so that when they demand people who are in the Sea Org to not have children and, of course, force abortions upon them in the past... They're not concerned about that. Go after the celebrities. More people will join the cult that way. And that way they can control their members as well. Because if you do have a child, you're probably going to grow some type of sympathetic um, emotional attachment as well. And they don't want that to stop them from being militant slaves of the cult they're in. We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I'm the host, Derek Lambert, and co-hosting with me today, my guest is Karen Della Carriere. Welcome back to Myth Vision. Derek. Hello, Derek. I'm excited. Huggies. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we're talking about one of uh, the more interesting characters of Scientology, and that is Tom Cruise. I've enjoyed many of his movies in my life, and I actually bumped into him in uh, Florida at uh, one of the water parks there, Blizzard Beach. We walked right past him, and I thought it was my neighbor because I've watched his movies growing up. And my wife said, hold on, isn't that Tom Cruise? Come to find out there were six bodyguards following behind him. Yeah, Tom Cruise had took his daughter. I guess they had during a divorce. It was just him and his daughter uh, at, at Blizzard Beach. So Tom Cruise... Tell us about this man and what happened in the 2000s. There was some big issue with him and, and Scientology. Tom Cruise has had three wives and all of them he divorced when they were 33 years old. What a coincidence, right? They hit the age 33 boom. <laughs> the first wife got a moon, Mimi Rogers. And... Tom liked the counseling. He liked to talk and examine things. And Scientology saw what a crown jewel he could be. So when he married Nicole, he kind of drifted away. He, he's left Scientology twice. But he doesn't do a grand exit announcing. He just does, he's just not available for their services. Mm -hmm. There's difference than that's different than um, renouncing and saying, I'm no longer a Scientologist. Right. He hasn't done that. He just sort of fizzled. Oh, Nicole's father was a psychologist. And. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oil and water come yeah. together. Yeah. And she came from a Catholic back. By the way, she's gone back to her Catholic faith, Nicole. Wow. She goes to mass. She, she attends service every week. She's become a devout Catholic. She had counseling. We had all this optimism. But something really, just to show you the mindset of the cult, Tom... When Tom was getting counseling, you know, I have to backtrack this. Hubbard put down in doctrines, get celebrities. And he named right. different celebrities that should be. Get the celebrities because they, Hubbard's theory was, people don't really think for themselves. They look up to an opinion leader. Yep. In other words, even in terms of voting, if someone you admire very much voted for Hillary Clinton, you follow that lead only because this person has so much altitude. Right. So he said, if a celebrity endorses Scientology, got hundreds of new members. So... <laughs> They didn't care about baby slaughter. They didn't care about just no new general, just kill the babies, kill the babies, abort, a force, because their theory was our celebrities will reel in new Scientologists. Right. 
this gets back to that whole thing you were talking about. Yeah. Cause I mean, it, so what kill the kids? It doesn't matter. We'll get new Scientologists using the celebrities influence. And I see what you mean. And using someone as big as Tom Cruise, a household name. So Tom Cruise fizzled out and Marty Rathbun was sent on a mission to get him back. A mission is where you're given exact instructions and you go get the product no matter what. You report daily on your progress. And Marty Rathbun got him back for some counseling. And at the time, uh, Bella his it was his daughters, Bella and Connor. Yeah. Connor Bella was six and Bella was nine, you said. They were brought into Celebrity Center and they were indoctrinated mm. on good and evil. There are bad, bad people and there are good people. There is evil, there are evil beings and good beings. And evil beings are called suppressive persons. Mm -hmm. The boy of six years old is being taught about suppressive persons. And then in that same series of indoctrination, they indoctrinated these two kids that their mother was a suppressive person. Scientology indoctrinated Connor and Bella that their own mom was an SP. <laughs> yeah that's like telling the kid their parent their dad's going to hell or something like you know can you imagine telling your own kids that your father or mother is going to burn forever uh whoa you know nice. it's kind of that idea kind of but nice comparison no 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 that's so uh and they did become very estranged from nicole this is a classic what scientology calls third party third party is a third person coming intervening and whispering black public black pr and is this and nicole kidman that's doing this is it nicole kidman that's this third party that's like whispering in his no, head no, scientology is the third party who scientology is the third oh party. i thought you were talking about poisoning okay. the kids against their mother scientology mm. is the third party using third party techniques to poison these two children against their own Roman Catholic mother who has father is a top psychologist at some big university in Sydney. <laughs> they Imagine the debates at dinner with that one. <laughs> they felt that Tom had drifted away from Scientology due to Nicole's influence. And that's why they labeled her as a suppressive person. Wow. They felt she was the who. Scientology always has a who. <laughs> right? Right. So Tom Cruise got completely wooed. You would think, why on earth would, doesn't he read the internet? Doesn't Tom Cruise have availability to look at both sides? Mm -hmm. He's oblivious to the hundreds of videos and posts and forums and Facebook groups. He doesn't. Well, I'll tell you, Tom Cruise was treated like a Saudi king. He was just at in base. They made a huge sort of a whole section was made just for Tom Cruise his own basketball court, his own tennis court, his own gymnasium, his own series of cottages. His, it was <laughs> beyond belief. Oh, man. And, and there's this famous story. Tom mentioned that he had a fantasy of running. Now, this is earlier, before Nicole is deemed a suppressive person they're still trying to get nicole to be, to get indoctrinated right this right. is earlier he's married to mimi rogers but he's falling in love with nicole filming a movie called days of thunder mm -hmm. so nicole 
and Tom are brought there, and he Tom just mentions nonchalantly, I have a fantasy of running through the wilderness covered in daisies, uh, holding Nicole's hand. Guess what? No way. He all remembers were up all night planting the daisy field wildflowers all night they got no sleep deprivation because tom cruise wanted to run through the, holding the coast oh. and had this mental image picture <laughs> so, <laughs> deprivation but they screwed up and they planted the wrong flowers by accident so all the flowers were ripped out and they went another it was like an all hands the base had to work just to please Tom's fantasy of running through a, 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 a flower bedded uh, pattern. So now more sleep deprivation and the correct flowers were, I can't even tell you, I can't even begin to tell you how he was pampered. Yeah, I can, I can see I can't even begin to fathom how intense this is. All I could say is, holy moly, imagine if Tom pulled out at that point. How damaging that would... They put so much into this guy. I would love it if he did, but odds are anyone who's literally getting their butt wiped by someone after they take a poo-poo, okay, odds are you're not stopping, you know? And this guy's just getting red carpet rolled out treated like a king but they're pimping him out you said that yourself you're like they're pimping him out come on <laughs> well, you know that tom cruise had a birthday party on the ship that scientology owns called free wings mm. and it cost four hundred thousand dollars tax free money the irs gave the church tax exemption so four hundred thousand was used to give a glorious birthday party. For example, Tom commented that he liked a certain kind of sushi that was available in a Santa Monica restaurant in Los Santa Monica is just, it's on the beach. It's a sort of just outside Los Angeles. Right. 30 minute, 40 minute drive. Do you know what they did? They transported the entire restaurant, the chefs, the food, the refrigerators, they shipped that all to free winds so that Tom could have the sushi he liked. I, I just oh, want to show you the extravagance. And then they did uh, they did clips of his various movies all put, put, put together in a collage and showed him the highlights of his most magnificent. This was in the theater. The, this birthday party was a four hundred thousand dollar bill and david miscavige's father that you interviewed Ron, yeah yeah great guy did a show how, how the musicians got no sleep they had to create music for tom and it went on and on anyway this is all tax-free money so tom's view of scientology is one of love and support mm -hmm. they give him anything he just mentions a comment of dancing in the field with flowers and the army of stuff created so his wish is scientology's command right they now Mm -hmm. You mentioned this is the highlight uh, getting into the drama that I think is relevant. Mm -hmm. You and me and everyone else figured a way to get with somebody and dating people. And like, I met my wonderful wife when we were in high school. I know, <laughs> I know. But you point out something that's really going on here. Scientology, you said, is hunting for a girl. I mean, they find him flowers, they bring him food, they pamper him and everything. but they're hunting for him a girlfriend can you yeah. tell me what what is going on here yeah well after nicole turned out to be like wrong for scientology she wasn't 
she wasn't obedient. She wasn't wanting more. She, 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 they decided she all needs a Scientology girlfriend. Right. But one that we can control and tame. So Vanity Fair, Top Magazine, put out the whole story. So Scientology put out a, an absolute lie to the prettiest girls in Scientology to make a short video to say, guess what? You might be in the next Tom Cruise movie. So we need a little audition on video to get your features, to get your demeanor, to get your mood and your manner. So send us a five minute clip of yourself. So the 30 prettiest girls in Scientology all submitted videos. And then Scientology sealed members who signed a billion year contract, which Scientology says is religious spiritual vows were actually a dating service working for Tom's sexual partner by viewing the videos and choosing the top 10 to send to Tom. Mm -hmm. Or how is any of this religious? This is looking for Tom's uh, next sexual partner. Right, right. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, though. A lot of cults, I imagine, would do something like this because they know how powerful sex is for humans. I mean... We all need it at some point in our lives, it seems. It's very rare that people don't. And my point is, especially since they've seen these already active, what better than to find the perfect Scientology girl to keep him stuck in? Th that is cult 101. Find a girl who believes like you. I got a friend who just divorced his wife. Um, she's an atheist. He was an atheist, but he became a Muslim. And literally divorced his atheist wife that he had three or four kids with to be with someone that matches his faith. Mm. So it tells you, like, they're thinking psychology here, even though they're against psychology. Or, you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you see these pictures of some young moon marrying 2,000 women with <laughs> these bulk... <laughs> Bulk marriages all done. You, you've seen it, right? Yeah, they have tons. They have even met each other previously. Right. And these Korean women are matched up with these. There's Korean a guy named Lord Rael is another cult guy who started a movement. You imagine Joseph Smith, you know, the, there's these celestial marriages, which probably were consummated at times, probably maybe not at others. Who knows? But um, yeah, it's a big sign of cults. If there's sex involved, yeah. Usually there's something going on, but sign up cults to interfere and embed themselves in your marital sexual life. In Scientology, when you marry, there are three people in the marriage. You, your spouse, and Scientology. Mm. Scientology is an absolute bed partner, <laughs> demanding and accepting knowledge reports of what your spouse says as pillow talk. Certain things I told my former husband, Eva Drench, who was the former president of the Church of Scientology International. What I told him in bed, he was enforced by the cult to report to the cult. This is what I mean by a third person in a marriage. No privacy. You can't even tell your own spouse something that the cult doesn't demand to know. Carol Martiniano forced Heber to go in a room and write out what I had said in bed privately. These did he, did, let me ask you a personal question. Did eventually, did you both kind of, stop telling the public stuff? I mean, because maybe drama has happened and it's been difficult. Did you guys? No, this was at the tail end when Heber was being ordered to divorce me. Uh, oh, wow. He was being ordered to? Oh, yeah. He was, he, he, he was ordered by David Miscavige to divorce me. Yeah. Let's get back to... Wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> he was ordered 
Let me send you a list of how many marriages David Miscavige broke up by order. They're all listed on the web. Like okay. 180, 180, I wasn't just, there's tons of people. So Tom Cruise uh, picked a girl, beautiful girl, who's a current actress. And Vanity, this is already on the internet, so <laughs> I'm not breaching privacy or just public. Right. He picked this beautiful girl and send you pictures. And they had a couple of months of world. Oh, she, she was, uh, she asked what would, Tom was asked by the cult, what would you like most on your first date with the Scientology choice? of your sexual partner. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'd like to go skating in the skating rink at Rockefeller Plaza. I'd like sushi and yeah, I'd like to have an ice skating date with sushi, of course, laid on a platter by the coat. Ice skates were rented, da, 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 da. she was flown to New York to do ice skating with Tom and eat sushi on the first date. Well, they had a two month whirlwind intense romance. And then she wasn't, she didn't have, <laughs> I can see where this is going. They were sitting at the table and she wasn't understanding Miss Kappa and he just dumped her. So they were intense sexual partners for two months and then he, Tom Cruise discarded her and she was sent to fly the Clearwater facility. And she was made to clean toilets with a toothbrush. And she was made to work at night scrubbing floors. She was designated as a failure. She didn't please Tom Cruise enough. He had to discard her. And she almost had a mental breakdown. She went from Tom Cruise's girlfriend to an incarcerated slave cleaning toilets. It's mm. it's it's beyond belief. Yeah. She wasn't a sealed member. Anyway, she's risen higher and higher in acting roles. She's a Middle Eastern girl from Iran. I'll, I'll send you some. So when the story exploded on Vanity Fair, Tom Cruise truly, because he doesn't have a girlfriend now. <laughs> well, he may have some random dates. Yeah. He doesn't let the church, because it sort of was shameful that this whole story had embarrassment for all around. Right, right. Why would Tom Cruise look through church audition videos for, couldn't he find a girlfriend without using the cult as a dating service? I mean, this is like, this, this was completely pimping a girl. Right. What, what ecclesiastical how can this be? But as you've mentioned, it's a cult phenomenon to get mm -hmm. a second dynamic. Yeah, and a better way to control him than to have someone who fits in with what he thinks. That's wild. So now he doesn't let them interfere with his uh, his affairs, his relationship affairs in terms no. of like... He does okay. not. He does not. But there's endless tabloid stuff saying, Tom's leaving Scientology. So I don't know where they get this from because he seems to be mesmerized by David Miscavige. He gives out statements that David Miscavige is the most honorable, ethical, wonderful human being. And then I'm going to end this little, we said we keep these short. Tom Cruise made this incredible statement, which just... First of all, David Miscavige called him 
the most loyal Scientologist that ever is, that ever was. Here's a movie star who doesn't work 90 hour weeks in the cult. Right. He goes around doing his pleasure. Mm -hmm. But Ms. Cavage named him the most loyal, best Scientologist in the world. This way. And you know what Tom Cruise said? He said, this is the finale. First, there is L. Ron Hubbard. Then there is David Miscavige. Then there is me. Oh, wow. So he is buying into, he's probably got a similar kind of ego um, to what David Miscavige has. They like to be the ringleaders. I think we should title this Scientology Tom Cruise and then there is me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Karen. This has been really revealing. It just shows all of the signs of a cult when they want to fix your sex partners. They want to tell you who you can talk to, who you can associate yourself with. And nothing is deeper than getting to your sexual relationship partners. I mean, that's the lowest of the low you can go. So I get why they would be embarrassed. And um, I hope more people see this and they go, you know what? I think I'll stay away from Scientology. I don't imagine he'll ever leave. Uh, he is that treated like a king, but you never know. It'd be cool to see it happen one day. Can I tell you just one little tidbit? Yeah. This was reported on, on Marty on different blogs and forums. David Miscavige liked to have a few of his inner circle buddies at night when he was, he likes to drink whiskey at night and they would chit chat and laugh and joke. And David Miscavige took out little tidbits of what Tom was confessing to about his very, very private sexual activity. Mm -hmm. And the senior execs of the Scientology cult would rumor monger and discuss it and laugh at Tom's sexual tidbits. Now, how do, like, if you don't mind me asking, you said that was on other blogs and stuff? Yes, it was in Marty Rathburn's. Marty Rathburn was second in command. He was oh, David Miscavige's wow. right hand man. So he was the one exposing he was all of this. Who, rescued, who reeled Tom back in the cult. And he reported that little juicy tidbits were taken out of Tom Cruise's folder. And Miscavige had a habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. There are numerous stories on how he took bits. So people think they're confessing privately with priest penitent privilege. Rubbish. There's no priest penitent privilege. What you say in session not only can and will be used against you in a com ethics committee of evidence, but is gossiped with and chatted about by staff members. Routinely, this happened for years. For years. Jeez. So well, his so private, what he thinks is his peculiar sexual needs and wants. What he thought was private giving up in a session has been laughed at and mocked by the very hero that he adores, David Miscavige, and David Miscavige's inner circle. That's what I want the public to know. Wow. Thank you so much, Karen. Everybody go down in the description, subscribe to her YouTube channel, and let us know if you like this episode, what you thought was interesting about this episode, or any other ideas pertaining to Scientology that you would like to hear from from us. And once again, thank you to our guest, Karen De La Carriere. If you would like more on Tom Cruise, we can do a Scientology part two with other anecdotes of Tom, but request it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Never forget, we are Mythvision.